I had a couple of sleepless nights wondering what I should address uh, this time so that, uh, you know, I, I could answer some of the questions which people have been asking me here. And uh, earlier, Russian was in Calcutta. Institute keeps on questioning one generation after another and it's, it's wonderful to uh, see that that spirit is so highly present and alive. Um, one of the greatest surprises was to meet uh, Charo Fad, came from Pakistan and uh, the other great surprise was to be able to uh, almost work together again with Kamal. There are so many things that we uh, share from the past and uh, it's interesting that he has developed uh, on the digital platform a new way of getting people together to work on a project. It's one of the things which has uh, driven me to a kind of despair is that people are not even ready to uh, work together with their cameraman or editor or uh, sound recorder. You know, what is happening to them after this uh, new technology has introduced itself, people are not working together because they are so, um, so confident that everything will be done in the post, you know. So it's only in the post that you find people actually working together and that you rather reluctantly because the methodology is that the software comes from elsewhere, you know. Imagine in the minds of the people that we address. And that imaginary includes all the senses. Initially, people thought that uh, it only consists of the two senses, sight and sound. And physically, yes, it's still sight and sound that is being uh, obviously uh, recorded one way or another, no matter what technology you use. However, uh, it is uh, 
now known through the study of, the, of both evolution and the nervous system that our cells, cells in our body are constantly changing. And as they change and divide themselves, they change again. Some of them are known, in fact, for being altruistic, producing compassion, or producing more life. And some are known as selfish. But these are, of course, names. What happens actually? is some reproduce and die and some keep on living. So I don't know which one is known as altruistic and which as the other. Selfish. However, as they change, they change, they repurpose themselves. So I think when they repurpose themselves, they create the new imaginary. And the new imaginary then has a relay of both perceptive changes, that is, through uh, color, you can, uh, you know, begin to imagine smells, you can begin to imagine touch, etc. And if you take, for instance, the Sankhya notion of how many, how many different uh, uh, perceptive mechanisms there are, then there are more than five, those which are active and those which are passive. Five on both sides. And in the passive, there is the question of the orifice, you know, the different openings in our body. And I believe very strongly that in the cinema, that I have practiced and that I have known my teachers to practice, that the most, one of the most important things is how you deal with the aperture. And uh, in my friend's, uh, in my friend's, my friend Vivan Sundaram's autobiographical work, which he calls a bourgeois family. Uh, he has himself in a mirror, sitting in his grandfather's lap and playing with the camera in a way that he's adjusting something or going to click something so that the timing of that click as well as the aperture actually controls the light which will come onto the film and change it. Now it's not only actually through that changing our perception of which is purely visual like at, at the moment I I can see some people, especially the ones who are sitting in the front rows, but the rest have receded, receding into darkness. You know. Now, how much darkness I want and how much light will depend on that, how you uh, deal with the <coughs> orifice of it. The thing which receives, you know, the will on the thing on that will depend. Uh, other things like the focus as well. 
So then you begin to find the subjective resolution to actually playing with all those things, the subject re resolution of this moment, which will never be repeated ever. Right? Not tomorrow, not ten years later, and it never was. And from that, when I juxtapose that to something else, my God, you know, what an explosion gets as a result of meaning. And that meaning is not purely that of the object. Because first of all, you are not the object. You are all so many subjects, full of uh, your own traumas, your own catastrophes, your own ways of coping with them, your victories, your defeats, uh, which are taking place all the time, along with their past and the, possi the possibility of the future. So then, actually, it also begins to create something that you might or might not ever come across. So, from this, it's clear that this is not only a question of sensate, sensate um, uh, experience. No experience ends being just a sensate experience. All experiences are inclusive of other experiences which may have happened, which may not have happened, and which will happen. And China and we went to an old Buddhist temple of the 14th century. And there, there are life size in that temple. There are life size uh, monks sculpted, shown debating something. Now, depending on where you stood, you could see them in different light, as it were. And as they are debating, and there is a whole kind of uh, body language which is present in the what you see of the neck, of the hand gesture, of the lips and the eyes which is, as it were, changing. Because you never stand still, nor does the light stand still. You know, the light also falling on them is changing. So, when you see that, when you see that, you feel that there are, they are undergoing uh, both an emotional and an intellectual, uh, you know, uh, experience, which which is not a, at any moment idealized or put into one slot of any kind. I think. The cinema is doing that all the time. The worst of uh, the worst of images, the worst of sounds, 
put together still do that. And it's the refinement of that that you can keep on raising uh, something which appears to be realistic or whatever uh, objective, you know, the, uh, in fact the word for the lens in French is l'objectif. And I, I used to protest about it before and now I'm protesting all the more that it is not to just get uh, uh, something in a particular perspective that you take a shot. You, know, you the perspective of course is there and uh, we know that we change the perspective in our minds and that's how a lot of art was born. In Ajanta, for example, on our own subcontinent, you see that on, on a single wall, the perspective changes. And um, uh, one of the founders of the knowledge of scientific perspective, so-called, was Piero de la Francesca. And you can see that in his paintings, if there is a vertical line, then let's say a pillar or something, you will find that on this side is a different perspective from what it is on the other side. The left and the right have a different perspective. Both supposedly scientific. So this cinema, I think, can reveal subjectivity not only on the part of the cameraman and the cinematographic team or the recordist and, 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 and the cinematographic team but also introduce many subjectivities which come from what it is showing from the people from from a flower, from, a, from any living thing, and even non-living things in cinema begin to appear uh, as if containing at least their history, if not their subjectivity. You know? For instance, if I see this model, Immediately I think of water in its varied forms and of plastic, etc. You know, if it were not, and it has also Kinley written on it. So there is an entire history which an object has, and of course, in uh, Nothing that is historical is without subjectivity. It condenses, history condenses the work of many, many subjective operations. So, uh, it seems to me that everything that we do from the time of scripting or just ideating to the time that we combine it all into a mixed soundtrack uh, along with the visuals um, is there to get a group of signs which satisfy us in our instinctual response to create knowledge and that's how I would think that all subjectivities work and that's why we do these strange things like making films. Instinct is not just related to uh, devouring food and people, you know, or aggression of other kinds. But it is also to, to know, to 
Uh, Kamal, for instance, mentioned uh, his uh, speech the other day. The, the psychoanalyst who is from this subcontinent, he was born near Mathura somewhere, where Wilfred Bion. And um, Wilfred Bion had sort of indicated that we have an epistemophilic instinct. We have the instinct to know. And it was that instinct to know which created actually a great eatable tragedy, the myth. You know? And it is that instinct to know which led to his blindness. I mean, because he was blind, he wanted to know, but when he knew he couldn't take it anymore. He had to blind, act physically blind himself. So this whole contradiction of, uh, of uh, his love for his mother is based on that problem of knowledge, of actually existential problem of knowledge. You know. he did. Because he loved his mother so much that he had to know her fully. So he started desiring her carnally. And it is very strange that it is a, a reversal of a myth, which was a tribal myth coming from Africa, where the mother had a blind son, and the blind son wanted to know what his object of desire was. You know. And no woman would, would agree to be with him. So, at a certain point, the mother couldn't stand the suffering of her child, her son, and she sleeps with him. And he gets eyesight. <coughs> and once he gets eyesight, he asks her, where is she? And she obviously can't tell him that it is she. So she tells him, he's gone there. So forever he goes on searching for so This sort of Cyclical, if you would like, uh, movement exists in the in the realm of mental space, which, uh, in a sense, was denied once we had through the religions a very linear progression. If you act like this, something else will happen. If you act like that, and then there was the idea of sin attached to it. That if you acted in this way, you would become sinful. If you acted in the other way, you would become virtuous. And then societies would behave exactly like, like individual human beings. And that uh, ended up to be idealism in Europe that we will have progress and the absolute state of freedom will be accomplished by the absolute state which will govern us. <coughs> you know, however, what has happened. So this, this sort of idea of a unilinear movement it is a necessary idea because uh, without having causation, you can't do the simple lacks of life. I can't go up the stairs again. I can't come down the stairs either, unless I know, you know, what causes one to rise or fall. But it's a very limited, it is of very limited 
kind of use to it. Therefore, it seems to me that uh, we have to uh, find qualitative changes in nature to guide us as to where to use the simple progression of cause and effect and where not to use it. And of course we will never find a perfect and complete answer. For instance, in, in Bresson's film, uh, he never tries to give up the action-reaction mode of editing, which is what the perfect uh, well-made play used to do. He doesn't, you know, and the new way we criticized because they, that action reaction. They said it's it's uh, too linear, you know, it's too Aristotelian or Newtonian, etc. But uh, they found, however that when they started actually making the films, that there were certain situations where they could not avoid it. It had to. Because it is one way of reading the universe, the objective. But it, if it begins to exclude other ways of time construction, then it just becomes like a leveler like death. It, it deadens the whole uh, possibilities, the, uh, the whole gamut of possibilities that each shot can give you. Actually, each shot can give you, or each word can give you, a whole lot of possibilities. What you try and work towards that idea. Uh, somebody today also asked, why, why is it that you told KK that you want to desaturate color? Which is what I told him when I paid my other one. So, now, the films that we had, all of them moved towards saturation because they were technologically made that way. Which meant, in effect, that if you followed the manual, the American cinematograph or something, you would end up getting a color which is industrially available. So you would constantly get this blue or that red on which you are sitting. But if you want to individuate that, you've got to desaturate. But you have to go against the manual. So that means that also you have to change the aperture. And if you change the aperture, the focus also changes. So you have to meet with that focus. And imagine then, through all that, A green leaf is also dancing. Probably the focus has shifted to that green leaf. And perhaps that's where your next shot will take. You've not yet conceived of that shot. But it will indicate to you that you can now move to another individuation, which the, the light at that time itself might suggest to you. And then a kind of meter begins to appear between this form that the leaf takes. And 
this form can be one which promises, uh, let us say, let us say, salvation, for example. This form can be something which stimulates you into certain movements in the of blood within your within your body where the cells begin to communicate in another way. And then it, it is accompanied by a terrific sound, let us say, the unusual movement of sound at the same time. You know, the experience becomes richer and richer. And it suggests not just an associative something or the other, but a complementarity of what you have seen. So you can go to a relief where the absent simultaneity, you know, the simultaneity of the absent does not just become a metaphor, because that is a very simple sign. So it is not, no longer even an absence, it is something suggested, what Sanskrit aestheticians might call a Vyanjana. I'm sure every language has a certain kind of uh, certain kind of um, explaining this phenomenon. Uh, in a colleague of uh, ours called Hu Xiao Sen in uh, Taiwan, from Taiwan, in one of his interviews, he said, we call it indirection. It is, it is not directed already, you know, towards something. And you arrive at almost a, not just one contingent meaning, but a lot of possibilities of meaning and signification beyond what you are showing. And that itself has to be left incomplete. It is not to be resolved. And that, that is a very big problem. You, you, if you try to resolve it, you are giving up. You know. And therefore I always um, begin to um, wonder when we speak of all these technologies, everyone talks about resolution. You know? Why do you want to resolve anything, damn it? You know? Let things be. Let's not complete it. Let's observe first. And let us there's another very great thing that happens. Let us also use, again, Leon was one of the first to point it out, from John Keats's idea of negative capability. That it is not merely the transformation of the outside, but it is a, it is a way of transforming yourself. It is an act of transforming yourself when you just observe you know, and try to give meaning to what you observe. But if you don't try to give meaning, which is uh, what a lot of people went into in between, that is worse than, you know, worse than anything else. Because th that is not what I mean, for example, all Keats wrote sonnets, finally, you know. So you try to give meaning, don't succeed, and that's what, don't try to resolve it.
don't complete, don't finish, don't deaden it. You know, because if you don't try at all, then you are allowing some other force to complete it. Here, when you struggle to signify, to get across, becomes more painful, that is what is absolutely necessary. And I believe that the imaginary gets enriched by this process. And so does every individual who participates in this process, either of creation or of viewing or hearing. Um, and therefore, I think there, there, there cannot be any formulae for uh, the questions that we asked. There's no manual on this earth which can tell you how to take a shot. But there are fundamentals which you have to take into account. That the actual fact of light doing something to, to the receptor. If the receptor is here, within our nervous system, the receptor is also there, within whichever camera or recording machine you have. Um, and I think it, it moves towards greater and greater poetry and greater, greater possibility of actual uh, mobile subject, a subjectivity which allows itself to move out of its own fixed notion of the self and the other. That's what I think.